Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good day, good night to whoever is watching today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you'd like to ask a question at all today, please feel free to message in the live chat. And uh, also, if something goes wrong with the audio or video or whatever, just uh, write a little thing down there. I can see it. So today I'll be primarily focusing on L's, T's, and D's. Um, but I'm really here for you guys. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to write something. It can be related to what I'll be teaching today, or it can be related to anything. And I'll try my very best to answer the questions for you. Um, so we may as well get started. All right, so the first letter that I'd like to explore a little bit today is L. Um, this is a really nice light sound and some people have the tendency to make it a little darker and by when I mean darker it just sounds a little swallowed it's a little too far back and it sounds quite dense um, a good example is with the word dull instead of it being dull which is still quite nice and light with the two L's it ends up being dull and it means the tongue is just a little too far back on the alveolar ridge and it starts to hit more of the hard palate. So when I say all these fun words and things, I'll just show you what I mean. So your soft palate is just a part here. It's like this little dip in your, in your mouth. And then before that, you have the alveolar ridge, which is just behind the teeth. So if you take a minute and grab the tip of your tongue, right here, alveolar ridge is here. And then it goes back into the soft palate, I mean the hard palate, and then the soft palate is quite a difference. You can really feel it with your tongue. It's very soft. So to make a lovely light L sound, it's the very similar position to the letter N. So in words like nuts and um, new and nice, that is a really good way to grasp your placement for L. So if you just swap a few of the vowels over uh, and letters, you can go lots, lots. It's very relaxed for um, this specific word, your tongue is gonna go up for the L, drop down for the A, uh, and then go back up for the tss, where there's a slow air re release of air. So let's just go together. Oh, hello, it's IPA common for British and American accent. I mean, I just got a question, so I'm just gonna read it for you. Is IPA common for British and American accent? I mean, the sound for IPA letters are same or different. I understand word pronounced based or different IPA. Okay, so uh, with IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet, um, there is a basis for a lot of the alphabet. Um, but when it comes to doing different accents, there is different um, symbols for each of the phonetics. So um, when I first started doing accents, I learned with the interna International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, hi, Jefferson, I'll get to your question in a moment, okay? Um, thanks for being here and asking. Uh, anyway, so it is very common for IPA letters um, to be the same with some words, but also very, sorry, same with some sounds, but also quite different with others. Um, trying to think of a good example. Uh, okay, the best example I could give is with your R. Um, with the British IPA, you don't really have an R sound. Um, it's only included in some words like, oh, is it even included in some words? It would be included in words like Australia. So you're going Australia, you don't go Australia, but it's not like American Australia. Um, and then I have a favorite answer. Uh, Aksha, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. You can definitely ask them during the session if you wish, um, or I can wait till the end. Depends what the question is, I might get to it at the end, but feel free to ask at any time, okay? Um, but, for British, they don't have the R's at the end of words, or like example, father or further, there's no R there. But with the American, father, further, like you're pronouncing that er in the further. You've got your two, you've got your, um, I'm just thinking of the right word. You've got your stressed and your unstressed er sounds, further. Whereas with British, you've got further. You don't really pronounce the R in that, further. Um, I hope that's answered your question a little bit. If it hasn't, feel free to try and clarify a little more in there, please. I'm gonna try and pronounce your name. I'm sorry, if it's not correct. Uh, Vazunit, um, but that is 
a, a good question. Is that some are the same and some are different for dialects? I know like when you get into like specifics, like you change your T's and where you position them. Um, but the stressing we do name. Um, hmm. Could you try and explain what you mean a little more by the stressing we donate through IPA construct? Because with the stresses, right, when it comes to IPA, what's really good is that it gives you a really great basis for the accent, but it doesn't give you, I guess, some of the natural rhythm that we explore. For example, with the word further, it is stressed on the first part, further, further, not further, further. Um, so in that sense, yes, it does offer a good way of figuring out the stress on the syllables. Um, but there are also other things that we do in natural speech, the natural patterns of life that will denote stress on different things. Like, um, what's a good example? Um, like for example, a sentence, I could go out. You could stress several, I could go out, or it could be, I could go out, or I could go out. You know, it really depends on what the message is you're trying to convey. Um, but it changes on a day-to-day -day basis because when we speak, it's emotive and it's how we feel things. Yeah, for sure, Jefferson. So let me read your question. My accent sounds very American, but sometimes I kind of sound British. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, Vesanit, it means IPA is not 100% given give phonetic sound. Uh, I can agree with that. I can agree with that because when I first started with my phonetics, um, it was not like perfect American or perfect British. I would like to say it's a stage version. So like really good for plays um, and something that is a really good basis to grow on because what's beautiful about speech and you're welcome. Uh, what's beautiful about speech and talking is that it changes from person to person, wherever you grew up, who you're surrounded by. Um, so IP is a great basis for it, but then depending on your background, it's gonna change. You're gonna have different words that sound you're like a really good example. Uh, and I do this, uh, I try not to anymore, but being Australian, I have a really open uh, sense of speech. Um, so I would used to say for sure, right? For sure. We're in West Coast which is sort of where we're going, standard American, uh, is for sure. Whereas I was told the East Coast is more open, like sure, or like sure, uh, with less of the R. Um, okay, so back to Jefferson's question. Thank you, George, for yours. I will have a look at that in just a moment. Thank you. Um, yes, correct. Intonation, rhythm, pitch. Um, resonance and IPA all make an accent. Accents are beautiful things, um, but it requires a few different things. You can have your IPA accent, but still, if you don't have the correct placement or the resonance, it could still sound your native tongue. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to another question. Uh, Jefferson, my accent sounds very American, but sometimes I kind of sound British as learned British English first. How can I get rid of that? Okay, uh, Jefferson, my question for you is, have you watched any of our videos? Um, sometimes a lot of the time it's a bit of placement issues. The American resonance is really heavily like right centered here. Um, a really good way of looking into it is the schwa sound, really closing your mouth a little bit more. I find that with British accents, I want to open up a little bit. I want to like have more air going through. But with American sounds, it's super relaxed, but things, there's not a lot going on here. It's quite a subtle transition. Um, just gonna make, um, sorry, just checking the, the questions. So my biggest tip is just making sure that there's not a lot going on. You're not moving your lips a crazy amount. You're not really going bonkers and doing that with your teeth and going up and down. And a lot of it is just, I guess, bringing your, your sounds a little further back into your mouth. You don't want them to be so far out because then you go, well, yeah, with American, it's quite contained in the center, um, especially here, schwa. Schwa is the best example that I can give. It's in so many words, today, tonight, love, hut, among, uh, among other <laughs> words. Um, so I would say that's my best example of how you could fix that. 
also listening to a lot of American speech, looking at videos, looking at movies, looking at speeches, um, and then practicing with the same speeches and trying to hear those different patterns in the way they speak. Because um, I know, I'm sure I, <laughs> I do have my own way of speaking as an Australian. And then when I go into my American accent, I'm sure some of my Australian speech patterns is sort of still there a little bit. Um, so it's just really about exposing yourself to the way they speak and the way um, that they go about speaking too, which is really interesting. Um, record yourself would be really important. See where you hear those British words. What is it in particular that make them sound more British? Um, is it honestly just your stress and your intonation and your rhythm? Or is it more like, okay, I say um, a specific sentence and one word stands out and it's super British. Why is that? Is it the specific vowel? Is it um, your consonants? Oh, thank you for the love. I'm loving the love. We need a bit of love at the moment, don't we? Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope that answers your question. I know recording yourself can be a little interesting sometimes and listening back. I know that I still struggle and I've had years of listening to myself, but um, yeah, just do it. I promise it's a really good technique to hear what's really going on because I think I sound great right now. Who knows? I might sound not very American at all. Like I just, uh, we, we have a different idea of what we sound like. Where's your friend? I'm just having my cup of tea. All right. Um, Jefferson, if that's not answered your question, feel free to write in a little more and I can try and clarify it a little bit better. Okay, next question. Uh, a lot of words that end with S or actually pronounce Z. Can you, uh, all right, so Sheridan. Hi, how are you? So your question, I've learned that a lot of words that end with S are actually pronounced as Z. Uh, can you elaborate on that further? Can you give me an example of a word that you believe to be ended in? Um, oh, thank you, Jefferson. I'm glad you sound, think I sound 100% American. I uh, really appreciate that comment. Um, end in S. I'm trying to think of one. Uh, shoes is a great example. Shoes. Um, I think it's because I don't have the perfect answer for you, Sheridan. Um, I'm just going to say, and I will look into this a little bit more, um, but I believe that most of the time it's just the joy of English. Um, we don't have very good rules with English, like other languages where it's like, no, it's pronounced like this, and this letter is always this sound. Um, Bless, you're not going to go Maz. Oh, sorry, my connection says it's a little unstable. I'm going to just stop for a moment until it reconnects. Okay. Am I still okay? I'm going to keep going. Um, whereas shoes is the example of that. It goes into that Z or Z sound. Um, you're not going to go shoes, shoes, shoes. And it's like things like loss or lose. I'm going to say that most of the time the double S has that sound at the end, but the single S goes more towards that Z sound. Um, I'm not 100% sure on this question, so please don't. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Not 100% sure, sorry, I do apologize. I'll look into it a little bit more and I'll try and comment on this video later with an answer. I'm sure I can do that. So please just watch this space and I will look at that for you. I'm sorry, I can't give you a better response. Um, all right, George, I'm British and I'm trying to learn a natural sounding American accent. Where do Brits, why am I the conversation with a more of a Z sound? Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you, Jefferson, uh, but George, I'm British and I'm trying to learn a natural sounding American accent. Where do Brits tend to go wrong with American accents? Um, I would like to say that Brits tend to have their sounds a little bit too further forward. Um, let me quickly just say something to Vazanit. Yes, accent and pronunciation are different things. Uh, accent is a way of pronouncing the words, but also pronunciation is dependent on where you're from. Like for my example, sure, like in my Aussie accent, Oh yeah, sure, that's fine. 
with my American accent, sure, right? So the accent and the pronunciation kind of go hand in hand, but also it's different as well because other people would say sure in America or um, yeah, for. These are my best examples because they resonate so well with me. But just because you have an American accent doesn't mean you'll always pronounce it in the way that some people see as correct American, which is not correct at all because there is so many different types of American accents. Like everyone you'll meet will have a different American accent. None of them are going to like, I'll have a student come to me and be like, what's wrong? What, what do I need to work on? And I'm like, honestly, your accent's really solid. There's like three things maybe you could work on, but that's like really small. I'm just being nitpicky at this point because I can always be nitpicky. I can always say, okay, you need to do this more. But in reality, you don't really need to do that much because it already sounds really good. Okay, back to George's question. So he wants to learn a natural American sound, um, but he's British, so where do they tend to go wrong? I find that they tend to just have their sounds a little bit too forward, and you need to just bring it back forward <laughs> i'm trying to do that with an r was interesting so to forward we're going to speak like that but then with american you're going to bring it back so if you're going to be like right over here you're going to be right over here and also the really big one as well as the r's so with the british and also with aussie we don't really have a lot of that r coloring in words like for example that i said before further in my australian accent it's further so I go more into a schwa, further, not further, further, further. I hope I'm doing an all right British accent. But anyway, um, so that's a really big one. I know when I was learning my American accent, the R was the killer for me. Um, the really important part with R's is that we need to keep the tongue down. A lot of people have the tendency, and me included when I was first learning, to flip it up. We want to go further. And I know it's not the nicest word, but for me, the word murder, I was doing, I was reading a script for my friend. Um, it was Alex, actually, who's also a coach here. Um, and he was like, what was that you just made with your, what sound was that? Uh, I was like, I was like, oh, is it murder? Uh, it make my tongue want to flip back. What we need to do is keep it nice and flat. For, I'm going to do a nicer word. For, there. So you see that my tongue goes up for the TH. The, for, there. Hilden, I can absolutely do a video on an Australian accent. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to do a video on, please just write it in below and I can do my best. I will say I do have exams. I'm still a student, so I will get to that in maybe a couple of weeks when I finish my exams. So I'll do that. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, the tongue is really flat and it's super relaxed and the best uh, a little transition I can go is from he, he, Americans also like to smile a lot. So I find smiling for some vowels, especially e, e is really good. So in going from here, here, you don't want to go here, here, here. So basically what's going on in my mouth here is the tip of my tongue is down on the lower teeth, he, and the back tongue when I'm smiling for the he is on the molars. If I'm not smiling, he, it's still there. But I find sometimes smiling or even going with straw is good and then relaxing it a little further down and then going ear. And all you're doing is moving that part. Ear, ear. And I find that that for me is a really good way to try and figure out the R rather than having it flipped because that R sound can be very indicative of where you're from. I'll have a lot of students and their accents almost like pretty much perfect. And then their R's, you can hear the accent. It's really subtle. And I don't think a lot of people can actually pick it out. But um, for someone who has had a little bit of speech training and even just has a good ear, people can hear that. Um, George, I hope that answers your question. I also did a little workshop on vowels a couple of weeks ago. Check it out, it might help you. It will just help with some of the placements and also what they sound like. But I would say the biggest thing for Brits is just bringing it and centering the resonance into the middle of the mouth um, and using the schwa to help you with that, like today. Um, and then, yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to like put it in the chat or, uh, 
I have an email, so it's kate at 21accents.com. So if you feel like you need to email me, please do that as well. Um, also, you can book a session or you can look at the course online. They do a really good job at showing you all the different American sounds um, and you can go at your own pace as well. Um, so I hope that answers the question and I'm going to move on to the next one. <clears throat> Okay, I am a native Urdu speaker and feel like my resonance is between my front top two and bottom two teeth. Do you have a feel the American resonant position? Okay, so the question is, do you have any tips or exercises on how I could feel the American resonant position? Yes, I do. And I'm so excited. They're really fun exercises as well. I do this pretty much with all my students every session. Um, especially if you're new, because it is really important to get to the American resonance sound. So as I've said multiple times in the video, it's in the middle. What does that mean? It means you're not going far back, and I'm not, don't even know what accent I'm doing right now, but it means you're not going far back in throat and really swallowed, and you're not going like super fast. Su I can't even do it. I would say French is like the most far forward you could go. So you're not spitting out your words like this very much but you're bringing it back right into the middle. Whereas I said British was still further forward still, further forward, or is it further back? I always confuse American and British, but I'm pretty sure British is further forward. Please don't judge me if it's not correct. I'm so sorry if it's not. Anyway, um, George, I'll take a look at other videos. Oh, thank you so much, George. I appreciate your comment um, anytime. Good luck with the accent journey. It's so exciting. I love learning accents. Um, even if some of my accents aren't too good. Anyway, uh, so with resonance, a really great exercise that we like to do is called we, you, way, you, and wa, you. So making sure you've got that nice e sound. We, e, a, and oo. So we can see the difference with my tongue. E, a, oo. Ooh. So the exercise basically is like this. You go, we, you, way, you, and why, you. And that is basically looking at some of the three major vowel sounds that we see with an American accent. Um, I find that one's very good for resonance because um, it starts to place it in that zone. We, a, ah. If you're going to do it, like say I was doing my normal Australian accent, we you so it's much flat like it's a much flatter e sound a instead of a a a it's different because with my australian accent way you like it's a reason it sounds lazy because my tongue's not doing very much but with the american accent you're gonna go way way you it's raised a little more your tongue is a little further up on your back molars and then we, you, way, you, wa, wa, you, wa, you is very relaxed, wa, like Calabunga brew, <laughs> ah, good reference on my part, wa, you, Australian, wa, you, my tongue is even more relaxed in my Aussie accent, whereas with the American accent, wa, you, wa, so all my tongue is doing, we, tip of it, right behind my bottom teeth, we, tongue on the back molars way it's almost the, the halfway point between bottom teeth and back molars way and then wa is the really relaxed one and I find that that can really help with your um, resonance for your vowels um, I hope that helps the question I could feel the resonant American a lot of the time I like to practice different placements as well so I will watch videos and other accents. I like to try and mimic as best as I can. I find that that can be quite interesting exercise in itself because um, you do something like your British accent or forgive me for my Russian accent, but you could go really far, far back in your, your throat and try and sound very Russian, right? And then you could go really far out and be French, and it's very far forward. Um, and then it's really like, oh, okay, this doesn't sound super American, and recording yourself too will help with hearing it as well. Um, 
So I hope that has answered your question. Um, do I have any other questions? Any other questions from people? I'm loving answering this because last time I did one of these, uh, the question thing didn't work. So I'm, I'm enjoying doing this and I hope they're helpful with the answers. I'm just gonna have a sip of my tea. Um, and in regard to the Australian O sound, <laughs> Jefferson, thank you. That one is, is a fun sound to do. It's a, there's a lot of motion of the ocean. Oh, oh no. <laughs> My friend and I, um, Alex, every time we say hello, hello, because sometimes we tend to like have that off lip. Um, what are the common mistakes made by Asian students? How would you describe resonance? All right, I'll do resonance first, Sheridan, before I do uh, like Japanese. Which I'm, okay, Sheridan, I'll just quickly answer Akshat's just really quickly because it's, oh, I've gone to my Australian because I was so excited. Woohoo! Um, I'll answer his question really quickly. Um, hi, Bogdan. I'm really great. Thank you for, for asking. How are you? Um, anyway, so he quickly asked, how would you describe resonance? Resonance is quite a tangible, like non-tangible concept. Like you can't just be like, okay, place this, like do this with your lips and your teeth and you've got it. It's the passage and flow of air between like your oral cavity and like your nose and your... Oh, like your mouth and everything. I like to do something called a resonance scoop sometimes and it's going and it's basically like using your your pitch and also not so much pitch like you don't have to be a singer or anything to do it but just basically seeing where your air goes so you can see that it goes down here and you can feel the vibration of each spot and I find that it's where it vibrates it can be like a good indication of resonance um, I really implore you to read a little bit more about resonance because for different people um, different techniques work um, and especially reading more about it can be really helpful in understanding um, resonance and placement like for example it's where the yeah that's my best understanding of it is the passage of air and the placement of air and where that's going for that. So I'm going to answer Sheridan's mistakes. Uh, I'm gonna ask Sheridan's mistakes. I just read the question and said her name or, or his name. Um, so what are common mistakes made by Asian students like Japanese or Chinese? Um, I find that sometimes they have quite a lot of nasality. So it can tend to be, there's a lot of, uh, air going up through here. Um, we need to like bring that down a little bit more. I find that that's a really big one. Um, and sometimes I, I personally have not worked with a lot of Asian students, Sheridan. Um, and I wish I could give you more of an answer. Um, but I, do not have the experience with Asian students to really tell you. Um, I will definitely like ask Amy and then I can post a little thing after the video too. Like I'll write a little comment. Um, I'll write that down and I will try and get an answer. But for me, with my experience with Asian students, it tends to be too nasal. Um, and it really is dependent on bringing it down. And also the R. The R is a really big one and it's for a lot of different um, accents and a lot of different people is really making sure that R is in the right placement, that it's down, it's not flipping up when you make it, but it's super flat. Um, so thank you for your question, Sheridan. I will try and find another like answer for you too because I would like to give you a better answer. Um, Heldon, how can you lift your soft palate while speaking to get the bright resonance of Australian accent, please? Ooh, this is a, this is a nice one. Um, I'll come back to you in a moment, Heldon. I'm just going to quickly do the, uh, P and th sound in American. Uh, you're welcome, Sheridan. Um, I hope you have a good day or evening or wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm just going to quickly go because we're just doing a bit more American stuff. I'll go to Aussie a little in just a moment. Um, Vazanitz asked P and th sound in America. So p, 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 b, b, b. The P sound with American and the B sound with American. That, exactly the same placement. It's just one is voiced and one is unvoiced, which basically means one's adding the vibration, b, b, p, p, whereas one is not. Um, so P sound is super easy, super simple. It's just 
with the sound of air escaping the lips. I'm pretty sure it's a plosive. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but it's going, people, please, p, p, b, b. If you can do the b sound, you can do the p sound. If you can't do the b sound, that's okay too, because it's the same as the p. So it's very simple. It's just the two lips. P, p, people, people. Please. Um, and then the th sound or th sound, same concept again. One's voiced, one is unvoiced. Tip of the tongue is just on the, the teeth. Thank you. Or this, these. Th if you go like this, th you'll feel a lot of vibrations and sometimes can be a little bit ticklish on the top lip. Um, Thank you, Heldon. Chinese, French, and Brazilian, and Portuguese are nasal languages when English is vocal. I appreciate that comment. Thank you very much. I, I hope I'm saying your name right as well. Um, but just for all of you lovely people out there. Um, so very similar. It's the very same placement for each sound. One's just voiced, one's just unvoiced. Um, anyway, so I'll go to... Australian accent. How can you lift your soft palate while speaking to get this bright resonance on Australian accent? My biggest one is just like making sure everything is really relaxed. Make sure that your jaw is dropped open, not like at a ridiculous level, but I find that this part of my mouth doesn't do a lot of work at all. Also having a nice amount of airflow as well. It's not going to be tight like with your American accent. Not not tight, but it's not going to be so closed. You're going to open it up a bit more. You're going to have the lips relaxed. Relaxing exercises as well. So like really like even massaging the jaw or massaging the jaw is like a really helpful technique to just loosen it up. In regards to the soft palate, it's really about dropping the tongue down a little bit more. So if I'm going to say the word in American regards, 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 my tongue is already up here with the, the back molars. Regards. And there's a little bit of like space, like when I'm doing it, this is what I feel inside, but it's regards, regards. So there's like, it's almost like there's like a little, I'm trying to just like mentally visualize what's going on here, but there's like a little hole in the back, regards for where my tongue meets the molars and then my top teeth. Whereas with Australian regards, first of all, we don't have that R sound there. So practice on working that to just kind of dissipate away, unless it's in words like Australia, which we do have it, Australia, Australia, uh, Australia. I'm just trying to think if it's the same placement with the tongue. Australia, Australia, Australia. Yeah, I would say it's the same placement with the tongue for the R when, in words like that. But really just practice having your tongue a little more relaxed in your mouth. Um, I really like, <gasps> like you've just had something really hot or like really cold or something shocking. <gasps> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, can really help open up the back as well. Uh, has that answered the question? Heldon, would you like to write something else? Or if it hasn't answered it, try and write it differently. I can try my best. Um, oh, you're welcome, Jim. I hope it's I hope it's been a helpful time for you. I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm certainly having a good time. Um, and I, I really, I know I'm speaking with my Aussie accent now, but I'm in a friendly old mood. I was just about to say, I really do encourage you all to do further reading on this as well and check out videos um, because I'm just one opinion um, and my knowledge is not like every single piece of knowledge in the world. Um, you might read something and it might um, differ from what I've said today and that's totally okay because um, we're all just here to like learn things and have a different viewpoint. Um, so I, I do encourage you to do further reading if it's something you're really interested in doing um, and just, yeah, don't take my word for law. Um, I'm definitely happy and here to help when you need it. Um, and I feel funny going in my Australian accent because it's an American video. But, um, yeah, just I, I do implore you to do that if you have the time, if you would like to, because um, that's the joy of accents. It's different for everyone. And you can have, like, the same basic technique or the same – understanding or like learn 
it in the same understanding and have like a good solid foundation of like resonance and international phonetic alphabet and rhythm and all of that stuff and looking at the accent and the way that air flows to create the right space and all of that. Um, but it will change from person to person. I know Americans who speak like this, you know, it's quite up there with the nose. And then you have Americans that have weird R's going on, even though they've been born and raised there. And that's because their parents might have something going on. It really is different for everyone. I know that sometimes with my American accent, I have some Aussie words in there, especially when I'm tired. If I've been filming for like a whole day, oh, I get tired. Um, and you're welcome. Uh, I really hope I am spell saying your name right. Vazanit, is that correct? I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for your comments and your questions. They were really good. I enjoyed answering them. Sheridan, I will find an answer for you soon. Um, and then is that, is that it with the ones that I wanted to comment on later? Yeah, and Jefferson, thank you for your question. Uh, George, thank you for yours. Um, Akshat, thank you for yours as well. Um, and okay, if there's no more questions, um, oh good, I said it, yes, excellent. As if there's no more questions for today, I'm gonna say goodbye. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciated all of your questions, like so much fun. I had so much fun today. Um, and for me, it's the morning. So it's a great way to start my day. Um, as I said, if you have any more questions, I, ooh, okay, one more question. Do you have to know how to raise your soft palate to talk with an American resonance? This is an interesting question. Do you not have to know how to raise your soft palate? I'm not 100% sure. For me, it really did come quite naturally. And I think with everyone's accents, um, you have the capability of raising it. Like I personally don't consciously go, okay, I need to raise my soft palate more. Um, thanks, it's my name language. Referring to these, attend to these, like, lower soft palate. Halden. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, thank you, Halden. He just, or she just said, um, since my native French is nasal, I tend to nasalize the vowels, which they come before or after N, M, and N, which are the only nasal I sound in English. I speak with a lower soft palate, for sure. Um, I would say your the answer to Akshat is then, yeah, you, you will need to work on raising the soft palate. But I also, if you haven't already tried doing a lot of American accents, um, you might be surprised sometimes it can come more naturally in some words than others. Um, I will do more reading on soft palate, I think, is my take home for today, because I need to learn more about that, I think, because I feel like I haven't answered your questions adequately. I can, I will definitely ask my boss, I'll ask Amy, we have a meeting tomorrow, and then I will, I will type in some questions, well, not questions, but I'll type in answers tomorrow, um, or at least get Ian, our lovely, um, he does so many things with the company, but I never know the title, uh, our lovely, he's our, our backstage man. I'll get him to write them down as well. So thank you so much um, for viewing today. I'm going to head off. Um, I appreciate our, oh my gosh, oh, this is me like trying to go into my Aussie accent because I'm like, thankful and in a nice mood and being American. So I'll just end as myself. Um, not that an accent is not myself. It is just an extension of myself, but I'm going to bring it right back here. Um, thank you all so much for being here today. I've had a really nice time. If you have any more questions, uh, comment on the video when it's uploaded, which should probably happen immediately because uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be comments. Um, and then hopefully we can get to you as soon as possible. So have a really great day or evening or night or, or, morning or afternoon wherever you are in the world and keep exploring have fun just try um my some of my accents aren't perfect but um where would i be without them they're fun uh so yeah watch a good film or look at a speech or just i love getting out shakespearean monologues so have have a good time and thank you so much any questions email below uh anyway have a good good one guys i'll see you around soon bye